So I know I said that my discussion on the midterms was the last word that I had on the midterms at the time, but I had something happen to me that I felt that we needed to talk about just briefly as we were going in at the very last seconds of the midterms. While I was on Twitter yesterday, I got into a, or I attempted rather, to get into an exchange with David Hogg. He said that nobody has the right to be judge, jury, and executioner, and I reminded him that our United States Senate tried to do just that to Justice Kavanaugh as he was being confirmed into the Supreme Court. Now, a helpful young woman decided that she needed to come up to me and reminded me that we do not execute people who do not get confirmed for Supreme Court. She decided she needed to take everything that I said completely literally and blast it out in the world to try and make me look foolish. We got into an exchange, basically arguing back and forth over the fact that this was a trial, even though most people on the left are trying not to tell us that it was a trial. It was a trial. I came out and said that, you know, if he would have not been confirmed, if this would have been considered a conviction, and this would have gone into an impeachment hearing for lying, presumably, to the FBI while he came in to be confirmed for the D.C. Circuit Court, and every other confirmation that he had prior to him, and she again tried to tell me that I was foolish, saying that this blazy charge would not have happened while he was in office and he couldn't be impeached for it. That's not necessarily true, and impeachment is political, so they would have found something for it. She rounded out the entire statement by telling me that if Kavanaugh had nothing to hide, then he should have just ordered the investigation on himself. This stopped me dead in my tracks, and this gave me a great fear of our government. I retweeted the statement saying that I did have a great fear of the government and this particular young lady, and I'm not going to put her tweet up. I'm not going to put her up there because, honestly, she doesn't deserve to have the recognition for this. But she came out and said that she was glad that I had finally caught up with the rest of the world when I said that I am afraid of the government. Now, here's the thing about the fear of the government. First off, if you are saying that somebody should invite an investigation against himself for any reason, then you have no fear of the government whatsoever. I can tell you that completely without any sort of doubt, because it will be the government that will be conducting the investigation. And if you have any reason to be politically silenced for any reason... The government is going to find a charge against you somewhere in their investigation. Don't believe me? Ask a Cuban or ask a Soviet Russian. Trust me, they will tell you the same thing. Now, I'm going to grant a little bit of fairness to this woman based on the, what she said and how she said it. If you are a Democrat and you listen to nothing but cable news there's a good chance that you are afraid of Donald Trump, and I'm going to grant that to you. When Trump was first coming into office, we had nothing to compare him to. We had his business dealings, but we had no idea how he wanted to reign. If he wanted to be a businessman, if he wanted to be a hard-ass boss, if he wanted to be whatever he wanted to be, we had nothing to compare it to politically. And that is a scary thing going through. I'll be the first to admit that if Trump had gone down the path that CNN was trying to tell us that he was going to go down, I would have been the first one up on the hill to try and take him down. Unfortunately for CNN, that never came to pass, and Donald Trump does very little more than make a couple of backhanded jabs at media outlets like CNN, which are then blown out into an authoritarian proportion that has really no bearing on real life and the real world. But to bring the Kavanaugh hearings back in, because that seems to be the sticking point in all of this, I do have to say this. I am definitely afraid of the government, and I am definitely afraid of the government if the current crop of congressional Democrats were to take power in all three branches of the government right now. And I'm not saying I wouldn't go into the Democrat Party and vote for them again, because I probably would if they were to put somebody like JFK 
back up and reform themselves into the union rights party that I grew up with, I grew up supporting, and I voted for for the first time that I voted. I'm not saying the Democrat Party can't be saved, and there are wings of the Democrat Party that are feasible, and those are the wings of the Democrat Party that need to rise back into prominence. What I am saying is this. I confirmed that we didn't know what was going on with Donald Trump when he came into office, and we had nothing to compare him to. But that's not the case for the Kamala Harris's of the world and the Bernie Sanders and everybody else that was railroading against Justice Kavanaugh when he was going through his confirmation. These people want to be able to put you on trial without having an indictment or due process. We saw it in the Senate. We would not have executed Brett Kavanaugh if he'd have been convicted, and I say convicted with quotes for what he did to Blasey Ford, even though there was no evidence to it, but they would have destroyed his life. He would have been impeached from the D.C. Circuit, and he would have been put in a position where he couldn't even sweep up behind a Safeway. Democrats on the ground will deny this of the fact, but I've seen this happen before, and this... This is Orwellian tactics, especially if you're begging someone to open an investigation for you. They had something waiting out there to be planted against him. That's why they kept railroading him for it. We have seen on live television what Democrats want to do, and we have something to hold them to. Until this crop of Democrats gets voted out of office and gets replaced by the Union Democrats and the Reagan Democrats and the people out there that are sane and don't want to put an absolute noose of authority over us. I don't want them anywhere near the powers of government, and I don't want them anywhere near control. The only thing that I can take away from this, honestly, is the fact that if Pelosi is named Speaker and the Democrats take the House back, that is like a gift-wrapped gift for Donald Trump. It is a statistical impossibility, almost at this point, for the Democrats to take the Senate back. Therefore, all of the obstruction against the president's agenda and any Senate bill that goes out there is going to be coming from the House, and the president, who's no stranger to having a political punching bag, will have the perfect target to sell to the people and tell the people that this is the reason that their taxes are going back up and why he can't get a law passed to take their taxes down or repeal the ACA. But as far as having all three branches and giving them the Supreme Court back, I very much fear the day that that happens, and I really hope that that party gets reformed back into the party that I grew up supporting before they do. I want to give a special thanks to David Hogg for bringing this issue to the forefront and the unnamed woman on Twitter that I discussed this with for the opportunity to discuss the issues. And as always, I always welcome a thoughtful and positive discussion in the comment section below and especially over on Twitter. That is at Ed's blog Twitter with a one in place of the eye. Thanks as always for listening to this show and supporting this channel. And remember, never take the words of bloggers, podcasters, or journalists as gospel. Find all the facts and draw your own conclusions. Take care. You're always for me